Hi, my name is Brian, and I'm going to be going over several horror games throughout history from the very beginning until recent games, and talk about how they've used technology to advance horror and terror in the games that we play. There's lots of different definitions of terror and horror. However, in many games, they either use jump scares, which, you know, you run into something that scares you, or you'll have something where there is an element of threat chasing you. And it was hard to demonstrate these things in older games, so we're going to look at how some of these earlier games did this. The first game is called 3D Monster Maze, and has a T-Rex chasing you throughout a maze, obviously. Um, so when you are running through this maze, there are prompts of text which alert you to where the T-Rex is. This was one of the first games, if not the first game, to pilot the idea that something's chasing you and you have to overcome it by defeating the game. The 1983 game Halloween was also a great example of early pioneering in horror games. It used the difference of lighting in order to be able to hide the threat as you moved through the game. Another cool thing is, is that the threat could have popped out from either side as you're being chased. So interestingly, Uninvited is actually the first puzzle-like game on this list, and puzzle elements aren't anything strange to these types of games. However, seeing these early puzzle elements is really interesting this early inside the game. This is also an MS-DOS game on the Mac, which made it stand out even more. Sweet Home is the first JRPG that really entered the horror scene. And it had often elements where you'd be fighting other monsters and, you know, mixing elements of survival horror throughout the game. Sweet Home also used general abilities of each one of the characters, who had a unique trait that you could use to get through the game even faster. Elvira Mistress of the Dark is a survival horror game that has you playing as Elvira the Witch while she goes around her castle. Um, it was one of the first players in the point-and-click game, which was uh, pretty interesting. It actually had different elements, too, like being able to drag items around, which were new at the time. It had a lot of cool elements that you'd have to use to take the castle back for the monsters. Alone in the Dark was one of the first 3D survival horror games, and is one of the forefathers of the entire genre that influenced a lot of later franchises like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. There's a lot of this game in Eternal Darkness from 2002 as well, and it pioneered a lot of different things, while originally taking place on the GameCube. The Seventh Guest is interesting that it is another puzzle game, but has you play as an amnesiac this time, and even predates Myst on the CD-ROM. Um, it had lots of cool puzzle elements, and a lot of different movie uh, clips that would play as you go through the game in order to be able to use earlier technology and play out events that you otherwise couldn't render. Clock Tower is an earlier point-and-click game as well that has you controlling a character named Jennifer. She moves left and right throughout an estate to try to solve and escape the area. The main thing that sets this puzzle game apart from the others is that you had a pursuer named Scissorman that would chase you the entire time. Resident Evil was one of the pioneering games in this genre, which introduced pre-rendered backgrounds in order for you to go around in a 3D environment that couldn't easily otherwise be rendered. By going through these maps, a lot of more content was able to be loaded and giving the player a wide range of movement. And Silent Hill also pushed a ton of boundaries, going apart from the image-rendered backgrounds to actual 3D environments, lighting changes, and an entire alternate dimension. Silent Hill had lots of elements in order to pull the character and the player into this horror universe. Eternal Darkness is another game where you wander around and try to solve a bunch of different mysteries and puzzles. Interestingly, instead of this game, you actually play as 12 different characters. Um, there is, you know, the standard system of fighting enemies and shooting off different parts of their body, but it has a lot of cool elements, narratively. In Fatal Frame 2, you play as two different sisters who kind of go around in these different areas with a camera, which is very similar to Luigi's Mansion and the use of a device to fend off ghosts. You have to snap pictures of them to exercise them. I find it quite interesting. In The Suffering, you play as someone sentenced to death. Um, there's an earthquake when the game starts, which causes a bunch of monsters to be released upon the penitentiary, and you have to survive by killing them or running from them throughout the game.
In Kingdom, do you play as an agent named Ethan who looks for a serial killer after finding a woman who is strangled? Uh, you originally catch him inside of an alley when your weapon is thrown, and you hold, during the whole game, you chase him down in order to try to catch him for his crimes. Manhunt 2 is a Rockstar horror game where oftentimes you'll have to use stealth in order to get through the game. However, the game itself is actually notarized for having a lot of stuff in the public eye and being very gruesome. It was actually banned in several places, and lots of voice actors refused to say who they actually were in the game. Dead Space is a classic in the horror genre. It is probably one of the most gruesome games that has been released and has been banned multiple times by different countries for how just graphic it honestly is. While not every single game can get covered from, you know, all the way back until 2021, Technology really has come far in order to make the things that we see visually and our gameplay vary and truly scare us more and more over the years. I hope you enjoyed this.